Hi, welcome to part two of what can you do with Uber data video series. In this video, I'm going to show you some visualization examples and how you can calculate distances using longitude and latitude of Uber rides using R, specifically using ggplot2 and geosphere packages. I want to spend a couple of minutes to talk about what it means by a tidy data set. So a tidy data set means you will have every column as a variable, every row as an observation, and every cell where the column and row meets has a single value. So this is what I want to achieve with the over data set. And then uh, once we get there, then uh, moving beyond, we'll be able to explore the data set in further details. I'm going to pick up where I left off last time with cleaning and tidying up overrides data. For those of you who haven't watched it, I'm going to provide a link below so you can go watch it. So, um, so the last thing I did in the video was creating the travel variable, which is basically the travel duration of for each overrides in seconds. So uh, and then I went ahead and delete all the NAs for the travel variable. So the next thing I want to do is to convert the travel from seconds to hour. And so I'm going to be using uh, the travel, uh, putting in the travel variable, dividing that by 3600 and routing that off to two decimal places. And then I want to have a look, see if it's really being created. And so we can see from the last column, the 0.05 hour equivalent to um, 180 seconds. So that's good. So the next thing I want to do is actually to calculate the distance, the distance for each override. So to do that, I'm going to be using the Geosphere package. And so I'm going to install it and load it. Uh, along with ggplot2, which we will be using that for some visualization exercise. This, um, so while that's happening, uh, I'm going to talk through a little bit about Geosphere. So Geosphere has uh, various functions um, that you can use to calculate um, distances based on latitude and longitude points. And um, so the the first uh, one that I'm going to use is called distant herbicide. It is basically uh, a method that assumes spherical earth, spherical earth. And so when I put this uh, the set of longitude latitude of the starting points and the end points, in the um, function, as you can see, um, at first, it's giving me an error. So what happens is I want to show you guys this step is because I didn't convert the uh, longitude latitude points, uh, which is in character format right now, to numeric. So, so make sure you do that. Um, so once we convert it, and then run the function again, um, there's no error. So, so that's good. Uh, the other function that I'll, that I'll be using here, it's called distant Vincent T ellipsoid, which assumes um, the earth being an ellipsoid shape. And, and the result is shown in meters. So that's good runs well and the other a function that I want to use also assumes a an ellipsoid uh, earth so it's called distance geo and it's highly accurate according to the um, info page for the uh, geosphere uh, package so let's take a look and see how these three distances uh, show up in our data frame. So we have here three columns with three different um, distances. And as you can see, a hover sign is the one that's 
kind of different from the other two because um, it assumes spherical Earth and the other two assumes ellipsoidal. So the next step, um, I would like to calculate the average speed for each ride. So to do this, obviously, I'm going to divide the distance by the travel hour. And I'm going to be using the um, Vincent, Vincent ellipsoid um, distance and dividing that by a travel hour. And let's see how it turns out. Um, okay, so let's see here. So we have all the average speed in this column. That's good. And so next thing I want to do is let's quickly have a look at the overall um, data frame. So we have about 22,000 22, actually observations. And as you can see, there's a lot of NAs around and um, and this is not going to be good for our, uh, uh, moving on with further analysis. So what I like to do is to drop NAs from all the columns and um, to get the, the data in a tidy format. So let's do that. And then, as you can see, we don't have any more NAs. And this gave us um, 6,400 observation, which is not bad. We can still work with that. And then, um, so this is where, um, this is what I was talking about in the beginning about tidy data, um, where you want to make sure that every column is a variable, every row is an observation, every cell, uh, where the row and column mates has a single value. So. So that's 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 what we want. Um, so I have a little note here to to um, to remind uh, to remind us of that. So that's good. Um, so the next thing I want to do is to filter the data to only contain drop off um, rights. So the rights that uh, that has end state drop off because there are other uh, end states being um, rights being cancelled and all that so I don't want all those so let's quickly do that and make sure it's all drop off in the end state so okay that's good in fact uh, we didn't lose that much right that's still 6400 okay okay we didn't lose anything actually so it's still 6400 observations so that's good um, great great so now we can move on to um, to visualize and explore the data a little bit. The first thing I want to explore is the travel hour variable. And so I want to create box plot for um, the variable and see uh, the, um, the output. Looking at the output, we can see that there's a lot of outliers and predominantly the data um, they're located under a half hour, which which is typically the how long uh, Uber rides takes. Um, so, um, and then this is where this is utilizing, this is filtering um, travel hour under 10 hours. And we can still see a lot of outliers. So basically most of the rides are occurs between zero and two hours. So I'm going to go ahead and filter um, to get rid of all the outliers, the majority of the outliers by filtering writes um, between zero and two hours. So let's do that. Um, so we didn't lose much observation. Um, so we're at 6,300 observations, which is good to work with. So, so that's good. So moving on, uh, I'm, I want to create a histogram to further Explore travel hour between zero and two, uh, and two hours, and so putting the um, travel hour as um, the x-axis variable, and adding on the geom histogram, we can see the uh, spread, the distribution of travel hour. It's a little bit right skewed, and we can see that the median is somewhere around half hour, um, which is 
you know, how long uh, an Uber ride uh, normally lasts. So, so it's not at all surprising. So that's good. Um, so I guess the takeaways, we you know, that the, you know, the median, it's about 0.5 hour and that it's, um, um, it's rightly skewed, it's skewed to the right. Um, the next variable that I want to look at is the average speed. And we're going to go through the same exercise with travel hour to look at the box plot and as well as the histogram. So let's do that real quick. And putting that through um, box plot and histogram, we can see that there's um, also a lot of um, outliers. And then predominantly the average speed occurs like right about here where we can't really tell. But in, on the histogram, we can't really tell as well because there's a lot of outliers. So, so I'm going to have to filter out the, out, um, the outliers and take it down to average speed less than 200, which is really high. And anyways, um, but anyways, that will be the upper limit for the histogram and box plot so that we can view um, the data uh, better. And so this is the resulting histogram. And in the box plot, as you can see, uh, we have the we have the median the median speed to be around 60 to 70 kilometers per hour. So it's right about here, and which is make which makes a lot of sense, and which is probably the average speed of how um, of an, an average driver. So. Um, so it makes a lot of sense, and and, um, and that's really the takeaway from this. Um, the next thing I'd like to know is to um, to look at the number of trips by the hour of the day. So I'm gonna first count the start hour. Uh, I mean, count the trips for each start hour, and then putting that through a uh, a um, a plot. So he, this is the resulting plot of the number of trips by the hour. So you can see that the the trend of the, the trips in um, in a typical 24 hour day, and then and we can see that peak rides occurs um, right about lunch hour, like a peak really high, and then also right about um, where in this is like. Uh, it goes up a little bit during lunch, uh, during dinner, and then picked again um, later in the evening. So this is when people when people are um, going out uh, to you know get a quick bite or having to move from one place to the other later in the evening. So it makes a lot of sense. So that's really the takeaway from this graph. Um, the next thing I want to see is to look at the number of trips by the temperature of the day. So same thing, I'm gonna first count the number of trips uh, per temperature and then putting that through a plot. So here's what I'm seeing. Um, really, we have most of the rides happening in the morning uh, or late night. That's when we have lower temperatures, right? So right about here when we have lower temperatures and then a little bit during the um, um, the day, but not as much as when um, when it's early in the day and later at night. So um, so that's really the takeaway from this graph. Um, the third and final thing I want to Explore is to look at the number of trips by the hour of the day by icon and start type. So um, I'm going to put that through a bar chart. And so basically, it, as we can see here, the x axis is a start hour. And, and we can see that uh, most of the ASAP rights and uh, reserve rights are mainly executive rights. Um, and then um, one difference 
between ASAP and reserve right is that the AM uh, seems to be a lot busier for ASAP uh, than reserve. So, you know, I can imagine like reserve might be, you know, those rights reserved for like some function and, you know, um, and usually it would be uh, for uh, business meetings or business lunches during lunchtime or after uh, work. So, so that makes a lot of sense. Um, and if you look at ASAP, um, morning uh, is typically really busy because that's when people want to get quick rides to places or get to work or get to uh, classes or, you know, uh, to meetings. So it makes a lot of sense that the um, it has a higher concentration uh, of a uh, higher number of rides in the morning. So that looks great. So there's actually many more um, analysis and exploration that you can do with the data. Um, there's, you know, the data has many variables. So these um, are just some examples that you can do with it. And, um, and um, yeah, so feel free to explore more and um, I'll see you in my next video.